Shalom. Brach da Yahweh. Brach da Yahweh Shai. Kol halayim la Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Rekal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, Fishermen Will Become Hunters. We're going to bring it out. Fishermen will become hunters. The fishermen are prophesying and are teaching daily, hitting the highways and byways every week, making their faces known and making their lives a living sacrifice for this word. Those are the fishermen. <clears throat> your teachers that you see. The Bible says, Thine eye shall see thy teachers. Well, if you're not prophesying or teaching, you're not a fisherman. So you will not be able to take part in hunting season. What are hunters? Hunters are killers. <clears throat> Let's go into it. So the Most High is going to turn fishermen into hunters. <clears throat> Let's get it. Fishermen will become hunters. <clears throat> Let's go to Mark 1 verse 15. The book of Mark chapter 1 verse 15 and say it. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Playtime is over. The time of the games are over. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's time to stop playing games. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Let's go to Mark 1. Verse 14, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. So the hopeful elect had to go through trial and tribulation, had to be dispersed and scattered into the lands of our captivity, the wilderness. So we have to be tempted tried and tested in the furnace of adversity just like Yahweh Shai. Mark 1 verse 14 and now after that John was in prison Yahweh <laughs> now after that John was in prison Yahweh Shai came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. So the sea represents peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. The World Wide Web or network is the sea. Mark one, so the fishers or fishermen are apostles, prophets, elders, teachers. Mark one, verse 17. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. 
and straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Now they were actual fishermen, but they are also figurative fishermen, fishing for the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew 1, excuse me, the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 46. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 46. Who, when he had, well, we got to go up to verse 45. Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew 13, verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. So the goodly pearls are the precious jewels of the elect of the house of Israel. The Most High refers to his chosen ones as a treasure or precious jewels, fine gold and silver. Matthew 13, verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. See? So the kingdom of heaven is going to be established right here on earth, ruling over peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Let's prove that. Let's go to Daniel 7 and 14. Daniel 7 and 14. <clears throat> the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 14. <clears throat> and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So Yahweh Shai is going to rule over peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the elect men of Israel are joint heirs or joint inheritors with him. <clears throat> Let's go back. Matthew 13, 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So only the chosen seed of Jacob the elect are the good. The bad starts with the two-third Israelites. This is a game for most Israelites. They just want to be entertained. They're not changing. They're still the same grimy old ninjas from days of old. They have not changed. They're still playing games, followed by the other heathen and Gentile nations. So the heathen start with the two-third Israelites. <clears throat> Matthew 13 verse 47 again again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels but cast the bad away so the good are coming into this house or the ark coming into the house of this truth, the house of David, and are going to be taken up into the chariots of the Lord. The bad are going to be rejected, starting with the house of Saul that was rejected, the two third Israelites. Matthew 13, verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just 
and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. So the chariots of fire are going to come, which are going to be preceded by nuclear fire and destruction. So those that are rejected are going to be burned to a charcoal crisp. Matthew 13, verse 50, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Yahawashai said unto them, have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, yeah, Lord, <coughs> those that offend are going to be cast out, rejects that despise this word and reject this wise counsel. So the fishermen are out right now. This is a grace period to repent and get right, O house of Israel. But the house of Israel is a rebellious house, stiff-necked, hard-headed. Let's go to Jeremiah 16, verse 14. So the fishermen are going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, are going to become hunters with Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> Let's go to Jeremiah 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So the Most High, as in the days of old, is going to redeem, save the hopeful elect from modern Egypt, America, Look on the back of your $1 bill. So it's no longer going to be said, let's keep going. The land of the North, North America. So just like he did in ancient Egypt, he's going to do better. He's going to outdo himself, so to speak. The most high is the Jake. He's like, well, you think that was something. Wait until you see the deliverance out of the land of the North modern day Egypt. Let's keep going. Jeremiah 16, verse 15. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. For the Most High is going to take up the elect of Israel into the chariots of the Lord and put us in the Holy Land. So the elect are going to be saved from the lake of fire, the fiery furnace. And the elect men are going to be changed, made into hunters. Jeremiah 16, verse 16, let's read about that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16. Verse 16, behold, oh, I will send for many fishers. Say what? Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So we coming, we coming. Right now, you're taking this grace period for granted. This is your entertainment. You just want to be entertained. You're mocking, you're scoffing, you're rejecting the word, and you're taking this time to get right, squandering the time away. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the spirit of the Lord is gonna lift up a standard of fire. Oh, behold, it's saying, look here, 
the Most High is getting your attention, saying, look here, Jeremiah 16, verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks, for my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. But we coming. And we're going to start with you wicked two-third Israelites, mighty men that are going to be raised up as walking weapons of war. Amos 9, verse 8, who are the eyes? The angels of the Lord are his eyes. Amos 9, verse 8, behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command, and I will send the house of Israel from among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. For the hopeful elect are going to be saved, redeemed, caught into the net, and put into the barn, the chariot of the Lord. Amos 9, verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake, nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. So the men of the Lord that are fishermen are going to be raised up to become mighty men and are going to help, <coughs> are going to help bring judgment on the earth, starting with the wicked two third Israelites. We coming, we coming. Jeremiah 16. Verse 16. Behold, oh, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. <clears throat> the mountains and the hills are the governments of the other nations the Israelites have been scattered into. The ruling authorities. Jeremiah 16, verse 17. For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity. Jeremiah 16, verse 18. Recompense means to pay back. Re means again and compensate or compensation to pay. So the sinners are going to be judged starting with the house of Saul, wicked Israelites. Jeremiah 16 verse 18 and first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Who's occupying the Holy Land right now? The residue of the heathen. But the judgment starts with the house of Israel. So the mighty men of the tabernacle of David are gonna be slain. So right now we're sending out the message of warning admonishment, sounding the alarm, and blowing the trumpet, but it's falling on deaf ears. <clears throat> so we're prophesying right now, fishing for the hopeful elect to be caught up into the net of this gospel, the World Wide Web or network. 
But most people, they're not able to receive this gospel because it's only for the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Let's go to Micah 5, verse 7. <coughs> the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as they do from the Lord as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man nor waiteth for the sons of men. So Israel is scattered into all nations. When the dew falls, it spreads upon the face of the earth. So we are like the sands of the sea, the stars of heaven were spread or dispersed. Micah 5 verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both trade of down and tear in pieces, and none can deliver. So Judah is going to be a terror unto the land, and the mighty men of the tabernacle of David are going to be walking machinations or weapons of war as in the old days Israelite men the battle acts of the Lord <clears throat> so we are among the Gentiles wherein there is no rest serving at the bottom kings in disguise so that remnant is focused on the elect the one third piece of the pie of the house of Israel so the Bible says none can deliver. The young lion of Simba, of the hopeful elect of the house of David, are going to be raised up. Micah 5, verse 9. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 9. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. So who is that hand? That hand is the hand of the Lord. The right hand. So the right hand is the righteous hand of the Lord. Esau, Edom, the devil, is the left hand side of the Lord. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and 30. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. So judgment starts with the two-third house of Saul, the wicked Israelites. Let's keep going. Who is the hand of the Lord? Hebrews 10 Verse 32, verse 31, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Who remember the days of old. The Israelite men are going to be restored back to gods on the earth. The Bible says in Psalms 82, I have said ye are gods. So the wicked starting with Esau or starting with the wicked house of Saul, followed by Esau, Edom, followed by the other nations, are going to be judged by the right hand of the Lord. The tabernacle of David. That's that hand. Let's read it again. Micah 5, verse 9. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. Let's go back to Hebrews 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
your heart will buy and shame your heart shot. So the battle axe, the right arm of judgment, is going to be raised up to smack down the house of the wicked, starting with the house of Saul. You wicked two-third Israelites, we coming, we coming, we coming, followed by the caveman, we coming, we coming. Let's keep going. Micah 5, verse 10. The book of Micah chapter 5, verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. For well, the militaries of these other nations are going to be crumbled up like aluminum foil, like a wet paper bag. We coming. We coming. The house of Israel, of the house of David, is going to be a terror throughout the land. <clears throat> Micah 5, verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off witchcraft out of thy land, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter that's led by three wicked Eves, three lesbian witches. We coming. We coming. Slay utterly both man and woman and little children. Pursuant to Ezekiel chapter 9. We coming. We coming. So BLM or BLM is led by three wicked Eve lesbian witches. The Bible says she that is my enemy shall be trodden down like the mire in the streets. We coming. We coming. Micah 5. Verse 11, and I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off witchcraft out of thine hand and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also are like cut off and the standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands, and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. For these cities are built up under Babylon, the queen mother of heaven. Wickedness, witchcraft is promoted. Sodom and Gomorrah is promoted. Pedophilia is promoted. Soothsaying, divination, has a national hotline of psychics. Witches are roaming around. False doctrines, false pastors. We coming. Idols, a Washington Monument, an idol. Fake white men, Jebus, an idol. Worshiping a rock or Ka Kaaba stone idols. We coming. Micah 5 verse 13. <clears throat> thy graven images also will I cut off and thy standing images out of the midst of thee and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee so will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. So the heathen starts with the nation of the house of Saul, the wicked two-third Israelites. We coming. You can laugh now, but you're going to cry later. Right now you're laughing, smoking on a blackened mouth, eating a pork chop with hot sauce. We coming not going to be funny anymore. You wicked Eve are laughing, mocking, scoffing. The Bible, 
the Bible says he's going to execute vengeance such as have not been heard. We coming. What are these groves he's going to pluck up? The harlot houses called churches. Micah 5 verse 14 again. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. The Most High is not playing. You Israelites are playing. You heathen are playing. Most people think this is a game. None of these prophecies have ever failed, <coughs> such as you have not heard the tabernacle of David, the mighty men of King David, the elect of the house of Israel, up and coming kings and priests are going to be raised up and are going to be a terror throughout the land. Let's go to Isaiah 41 verse 8. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Michael, let's go to Isaiah 41 verse 8. book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8 but thou Israel are my servant Jacob whom I have chosen the seed of Abraham my friend most high is going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and salvation starts with the tabernacle of David the apostles the prophets the teachers so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos are Israelites. The Bible says we were scattered into all nations. Say again. Yeah, Hispanics, yeah. Yeah, John 8 and 44, he was talking to wicked Israelites, the Pharisees and Sadducees there. There was a wicked sect of Israelites. Say, ye are of your father, the devil. The first murderer. Right. The first murderer. That takes you back to Genesis. It does. You're absolutely right. It goes back to Cain, the first liar and murderer. So what I'm getting at is I think there was two fathers in the earth. There was, you know, they were twins because they presented. Right. Cain and Abel. So the, the cursed seed came through Cain and Esau. And the blessed seed came to Abel and Jacob. Well, their father is Adam. Cain and Abel, their father is Adam. But no, 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 there's nowhere in the Bible where it says he has sex with two people. No, I'm, no, trust me, I've read it. I've read the Bible. It doesn't say he had two fathers. Well, no, no, the chosen seed goes to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What does devil mean? I'm getting ready to test your knowledge. What does devil mean? Devil comes from the Greek diablos, which means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. So Cain was a murderer and a liar. You see? So that spirit of, let me wait till he goes by. So that spirit of Cain came through Esau, which is talking about the Romans. That's why Yahawashai was saying, ye are of your father, the devil. They were following the Roman empire, deceivers, slanderers, murderers. You see that? Well, trust me, I make this Bible my habitation. I study this daily. <laughs> Hey, we all students, sir. I'm a student too. You take care. Let's keep it moving. <clears throat> you know, what's amazing to me is when people, they come up to you <clears throat> and instead of humbling down, they just want to start off teaching. It's absolutely amazing. And wicked two-third Israelites do that too. <clears throat> Let's go to Isaiah 41, verse 8. 
book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8. <clears throat> but thou, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, whom thou. So the Most High has not cast away the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes of Israel. Isaiah 41, verse 9. Thou whom I thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. See that? So there is no immaculate conception. Mary and Joseph conceived Yahushai, Yahushai Hamashiach by having sex, intercourse, where the baby was conceived in her womb. Conceived means the seed met the egg. <clears throat> so we are not cast away. So the Most High is getting ready to raise up up-and-coming kings and priests already have started raising them up that you're seeing hitting the highways and byways in mass numbers preaching and teaching prophesying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Isaiah 41 verse 10 fear thou not for I am with thee be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the men of David, the mighty men are being lifted up through the spirit and power of the right hand. Yahweh Shai, he is the right hand of the Most High. So it's going to take the spirit and power of the Lord to come upon the hopeful elect of the house of David. And that starts with prophesying and breaking down these scriptures, teaching daily in the temple. What is the temple? The congregation of Israel. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish. We coming. We coming. We coming. The hopeful elect of the tabernacle of David being resurrected from the graves, resurrected from ignorance, the valley of the shadow of death, gross darkness, and are standing on our feet, bold as lions, prophesying. <coughs> kind of like that. Let's read that again. Isaiah 41 verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. They that war against the Most High's inheritance, the Most High is our stronghold, our habitation, our fortress. He is our shield and buckler. And our sword is the word of the living power. 
Your how about shooting your house shot? <coughs> Beautiful. Isaiah 41, verse 12. <coughs> Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, thy power, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. We don't have the spirit of fear. We don't have the spirit of failure. We got victory. We got how about Shimmy how shot? We don't have the fear of the feet. We don't have the fear of being trampled on the foot, trampled on the feet. We're gonna keep moving upward and onwards towards the light. We can't stop, won't stop. Gotta keep going, gotta keep going. The Most High says, fear not, my servant Jacob. I will help thee and I'm gonna believe and trust on the spirit and power of the Lord. Isaiah 41, <clears throat> Isaiah 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So we are a worm right now. No power. We're being devoured. By all the beasts and fowls of the, air, of, of the air, all the beasts of the field and fowls of the air. So we are powerless, being trampled underfoot and being easily devoured. But we got our, our powers on our side. The Most High Yahweh is on our side. The God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we ought to fear not that worm is going to be changed to a powerful butterfly that's going to mount up with wings and is going to be moving lightning speed with great power. <clears throat> so we're going to become walking weapons of war. Isaiah 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. For the mountains and the hills are the governments of the kings of the earth, the heathen and Gentile nations that are ruling under Edom, under wickedness. So these other nations are going to be beat to powder. Let's prove that. Let's go to second Exodus. 16 verse 10. So what is that whirlwind? The tabernacle of David and the mighty men of the house of the elect of Israel are going to be the ground force, the battle axe of the Lord. The whirlwind is going to be close air support, the chariots of fire, so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Second Ezra 16 Verse 10, let's go to verse 8. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at this
presence for the mighty men of King David, the tabernacle of the house of the elect, are going to become walking weapons of war, having great iron teeth. Isaiah 41, verse 15, again. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. So they're going to be beaten to powder, starting with Armageddon, nuclear war, followed by the chariots of the Lord, whirlwinds of fire, <clears throat> and the mighty men of Israel are going to do valiantly, no more being cursed out by our own wives, shame, put down, beat down, first fired, last hired, called by words, proverbs, nigger, ape, spick, sambo, jigaboo, no more. Let's go to Isaiah 40 and 28. book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding so this knowledge far exceeds the multitudes or the masses understanding <coughs> They can't receive this word, but the hopeful elect have the mind of Yahweh Shai. Let's get that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to start up. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which the Most High hath prepared for them that love him. So if you love him, you're doing what's commanded of from this book. And the men are out prophesying, preaching and teaching, hitting the highways and byways. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. But the Most High hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of the most high. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of the most high knoweth no man, but the spirit of the most high. So the men that's teaching, the apostles, prophets, elders, have the Holy Spirit the comforter that teaches us all things pertaining to the scriptures. <clears throat> First Corinthians 1, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the most high, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the most high, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So without the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive this word, this ingrained seed of truth. It's going to fall on hard, stony ground. So it's not going to penetrate your mind. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, 
for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Well, you have to be amongst the hopeful elect of the chosen seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to receive this full doctrine. Let's go back. Who have known? Where is that at? Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. So you're seeing the spirit and power of the Lord on the men that's teaching and prophesying. You have to have the spirit of the Lord in order to be able to teach this word and to break down the scriptures. And we also need what? Teachers. So 1 Corinthians 14 and 32, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So we all teach and preach the same thing. So that power starts with this word. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So this word or the seed of truth is going to bloom and blossom. So the men of the Lord are gonna be raised up with spiritual power and be changed. We're gonna put on new garments, spiritual bodies. We're gonna show you in history on how the men of the Lord were mighty men, King David and the mighty men of King, King David. Let's go to 2 Samuel 23. 2 Samuel 23. Let's go to verse 1. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high the anointed of the Most High of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. See that? So without the Spirit of the Lord, you can't speak this truth without the Comforter. Second Samuel 23 verse two, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue the god of israel said the rock of israel spake to me he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of the most high so you have to be grounded in his word to be raised up as a king or a priest that's why the bible says that king david pleased the lord <clears throat> so wisdom establishes a kingdom. What is wisdom? This truth. Second Samuel. Let's go to Second Samuel 23, verse 8. Second Samuel 23, verse 8. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tetzmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite, 
he lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. One man of the mighty men of the house of David slew 800 with the sword. We coming, we coming. Read Psalms 149. So what has been will be again. And there is no new thing under the sun. Second Samuel 23, verse nine. <clears throat> and after him was Eleazar, the son of the doe, the Ahite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand played unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to a spoil. But without the spirit and power of the Lord, we can do nothing. So we gotta wait on the Lord and come to his word. Second Samuel 23, verse 10. He arose and smote the Philistines unto his hand was weary and his hand played unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to a spoil. So the world, the glory and the riches, everything was made for our sakes. Pursuant to second address, chapter six, somewhere around verse 55. So to the, to the victors, get the spoils, all the inheritance of the earth, all the land, all the gold and silver and people are going to be servants and handmaids under the house of Israel, under the tabernacle of David. So we get the victory through what? The victory is through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. We cannot do this on our own. So we got to wait on the Lord. Second Samuel 23, verse 12. 2 Samuel 23, verse 12. <clears throat> but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Abdullah. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. So right now that troop is Sleazy E, <clears throat> Esau Edom. They overcame Gad by a troop. That's in Genesis 49, somewhere around verse 18, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get it. So the modern day troop is Esau Edom. Genesis 49. So they are the modern day troops. That's why Isaiah 59, somewhere around verse 20 says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Let's go into that truth. See, Genesis 49, let's read verse 18 first. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. So we got to wait on the spirit and power of the Lord. The same spirit that gives us wisdom, power, and strength to teach this Bible. We got to wait on the Lord. Genesis 49, verse 18. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So the modern day Egyptians, Philistines, Assyrians, are the Edomites. <clears throat> so the uh, U.S. Cavalry Troop overcame Gad. Just so you have understanding. 
Second Samuel. 23. Verse 11. <clears throat> and after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Hararite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. There was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hole, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by thy gate. So King David was thirsty, and the mighty men of King David is going to be able to break through the lines of the enemies. 2 Samuel 23, verse 15. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but pour it out unto the Lord. So King David had integrity. So did the mighty men of King David. This is showing integrity, holding fast unto the word. Second Samuel 23, verse 17. <clears throat> and he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. So only three mighty men of King David went through an entire army of Philistine troops. Second Samuel 23. Verse 18, and Abishai, the brother of Yaab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three, and he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them, and had the name among three. Was he most honorable of three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. The Bible tell us that which has been shall be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. So this is coming back. Second Samuel 23, verse 20. And Benaiah, the son of Yehada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. So it takes spiritual power or spiritual intervention to be able to do great and marvelous, wondrous works. So the Lord is getting his glory through his elect. So the elect men are his witnesses that attest to the might and power of the Lord. <clears throat> Second Samuel 23 verse 22 These things did Benoi 
these things did Benahiah, the son of Yahweh, and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. So this spiritual power is coming back. And I'm going to show you that. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's go to verse 1. Book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. So these are angels. Prophets are also called what? Messengers. Angels are messengers. So prophets are also messengers, which are also angels of the Lord. Ezekiel 9, verse 2. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So America is a modern altar. Two-thirds Israelites are going to be slaughtered here, followed by the other heathen and Gentile nations. Ezekiel 9, verse 3. So the Most High is going to receive a burnt offering. That's why people are referred to as what? Beasts. So when you read Isaiah 34, the slain of the Lord is still with the kidneys of rams, goats. See that? <coughs> Israelites followed by the other nations. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. Let's go to verse 3, excuse me. The book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 3. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house and he called to the man, clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. Angels. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sighed and that cried for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Starting with Babylon, and starting with the two-third Israelites. So the elect are sighing and crying through this word. So that mark is the thawa, which means an exemption from judgment. Only the elect are sighing and crying, starting with the tabernacle of David, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, <coughs> followed by the remnant of the house of David. Ezekiel 9, verse 5. And to the others, he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Say, see, what does smite mean? To kill. So the prophets the teachers, the apostles, are transitioning here from fishermen to hunters, killers. Ezekiel, what does that do to the midst of Jerusalem? Judgment starts with the house of Israel, the house of Saul, two-third wicked Israelites. So we are a people first, 
before we are city. Ezekiel 9, verse 5. And to the others, he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men, which were before the house. So judgment starts with the house of Israel. Men, women, and children that are following the ways of Babylon. And our spirits are ancient spirits that have been here before, that come back in the third and fourth generation for judgment. So the Most High is going to bring judgment upon the earth. And he's beginning at his sanctuary, the house of Israel. Ezekiel 9, verse 6. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with all. Ezekiel 9, verse 7. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. We coming. All the game players, all the mockers and scoffers, all those that are not taking this word seriously, we're coming. Fishermen, turn hunters, we're coming. Ezekiel 9, verse 8. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face, and cried, and said, Ah, Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. See, all the sinners of my people shall fall by the sword, which say, evil shall not overtake, nor prevent us. We read that in Amos 9, verse 9 through 10. Well, he's starting this judgment with his own people. A lot of Israelites are also proud. You have some nerve to be proud, and at the bottom. So wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Ezekiel 9, verse 10. <laughs> and as for me also, my eye shall not spare. Say what? And as for me also, my eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the men clothed with linen which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. So the men of the Lord follow this word, follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, pursuant to Revelations 14 and 4, which starts with the tabernacle of David, of the elect of the house of Israel. Let's keep going. The way kingdom is built upon the pillars of wisdom, which starts with coming back to this word, which gives us the spirit and power and strength to teach. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. 
Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. So we get strength and power through the power of the Lord, calling on his name and having faith in his works, his might. So we can do nothing without the spirit and power of the Lord. Let's go to Philippians 4 and 13. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, which strengtheneth me. See? Let's go back. <coughs> Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, we're being raised up from the valley of the dry bones. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happening to them all. So there's no such thing as free will. Our destinies or our destination is preordained by the will of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We don't choose to come into this word. He chooses who he pleases and has mercy on who he wants. Let's prove that. Let's go to John 15. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name he may give it you these things i command you that ye love one another and we show love by teaching this word so you don't decide to come into this truth you're being called by the spirit and power of the lord through his word and through bible prophecy let's go back to ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fish that are taken in an evil net. And as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So this is all through the will and power of the Most High, whose soul are going to be taken up into the net, which starts with this doctrine, and who's going to be judged and brought down to the grave or destroyed. Who's going to be saved and delivered? It's all based on the will of the Lord. So we have no control over our soul. We have no control over our spirit. The father of spirits is in full control. His incorruptible spirit is in all things. Pursuant to wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. Let's jump down. To Ecclesiastes 9, verse 16. Then said I, Wisdom 
is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So the Most High is pulling a veil or a cloak of deception over those who lack faith. He's using men dressed in sackcloth that are poor and downtrodden, kings up and coming, so that you can be turned away if you believe not or if you lack faith. But those that have faith are going to be attracted to his word. That's why he says in John 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice. So you're going to ignore what a man looked like and listen to the words coming out of this Bible. See that? So you're walking by faith, not by sight. But those that are full of pride are going to be deceived. They're going to see us dressed like bums and ignore the words coming out of this Bible. So the Most High is testing your faith. If you don't believe, you're going to be destroyed. That is by design. You think we're nothing. Let's read it again. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 17. The words of a wise man are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that rules among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. So the world, the Bible says in Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So right now the earth is under the international bankers, the global elites, the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, the DuPonts, the Rockefellers, that's trying to bring forth a global reset a new world order and are trying to bring forth the digital cryptocurrency, the RFID mic microchip, the mark of the beast. But only the wise are going to hear this word. Only the wise that are not full of pride are going to come to this wise council. Micah 3 and 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So the spirit and power of the Lord rests in this word. Our ability to go out and teach and preach and prophesy. So judgment and salvation starts with the house of Israel. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos that were dispersed the diaspora scattered into all nations. First Corinthians five, verse four, in the name of our Lord. <coughs> First Corinthians five, verse four, in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, so our Lord and Savior is Hebrew. His name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus. Yahweh Shai means deliverer, savior. And Christ comes from the Greek Christos, which means the anointed one. It's Hamashiach. So there's power in his name, power in this word. Let's read that again. So we get power and strength through this word and through the name of, Ye of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 4. In the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. See, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. We get strength and power through the name of the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Hamashiach, which strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. 
So we already won. We get the victory through our Lord, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We get the victory. And in his name, there is strength and power. Let's go to Isaiah 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, Yahweh, is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. So we get delivered. We get power and strength by having faith and coming back to this word and believing and trusting in the spirit and power of our God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and trusting in his name, calling and believing in his name, believing in his doctrine, believing in the Bible. So that new song is this doctrine. That's the new song we're singing. The Bible says in this gospel shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. So this gospel is going out through the World Wide Web, the internet, the global network. This net or this truth is only gathering the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, the elect sons and daughters of Jacob. So this new song is this gospel, this new truth that is being taught in these last days. Let's read that again. Isaiah 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, Yahweh, is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Let's go to Exodus 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my power, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is his name. See, we get strength, power, and salvation, which is deliverance, the kingdom of heaven, by coming back to this word, calling on his name, and singing this new song, crying aloud, sparing none, and lifting up our voice like a trumpet. That's this new song. Pursuant to Isaiah 58 and 1. Ezekiel 33 and 30 through 33. This new song is this doctrine. <coughs> Jeremiah 16, verse 18. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. So the Holy Land is occupied by the residue of the heathen. They have the big escape parade every year. You can, you can hook up or link up with a child over there. Pedophilia is pushed over there too. and they're cooking and selling pork. Those are detestable things and they're teaching false doctrines. Islamic mosques are being raised up over there, all types of wickedness, idols, graven images. Let's read that again, Jeremiah 16, verse 18. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Even the Israelites are being filled with abominations, false doctrines, idols, graven images, harlot houses called churches, eating shrimp, crab, pork, lobster. So his inheritance is also his people, the children of Israel or the congregation of Israel. Jeremiah 16, verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth 
and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. See? So those lies and vanity is connected to idolatry, witchcraft, detestable and abominable things. What we eat, what we teach, what we preach. And the Gentiles are going to, the Gentiles around the world are gradually seeing who the Lord's people are. His chosen children of Israel. They're seeing that now. And they're going to really know when the elect of Israel are caught up into the chariots of the Lord. Let's close out here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. So this is a mystery that only the hopeful elect can receive. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So these bodies have to be changed. We have to put on the new garments. We have to get those new bodies in order to inherit a holy new kingdom built in righteousness, built upon the pillars of wisdom and truth. Holy, acceptable. First Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So at the seventh trumpet, we're going to be raised up, built into immortals, changed into immortals. God's on the earth. That's why the heathen and Gentile nations are going to be saying, care for green tea, my Lord. Green tea, my Lord. Care for a rack of lamb, my Lord. Salmon and cheese, my Lord. Your wish is our, com is our command. So they're going to be serving us hand and foot. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. And our women are going to be back in order. No more wicked Eves in bed with the serpent. Sleazy Eve, Esau, Edom. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so we'll never be able to sin anymore we'll never be able to get defiled anymore by detestable and abominable things no more idolatry worshiping idols no more false christianity no more eating shrimp crab pork lobster first corinthians 15 verse 53 for this in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So right now we have mortal fleshly bodies. So we have to be changed. And we, that change starts with the seed of truth. And it's going to be cultivated. It's going to fully blossom into immortals, gods on the earth. So everything starts with the seed of truth being planted. Mortal means to die. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality. First, first Corinthians 15, verse 54. 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So Esau Edom is going to be put down, and our bodies are going to live forever. No more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more affliction, no more oppression. We're not going to be oppressed anymore. <coughs> and pain, sorrow, tears, and suffering is going to be wiped away for Israel, starting with the elect. literal death is going to be swallowed up and death that man of sin the son of perdition Esau Edom is going to be defeated in victory because the mighty men of the tabernacle of David are being raised up and are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54 so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So you men out there need to be always abounding in the work of the Lord, showing your faith by your works and your works by your faith. We show our faith by our works. And our works are reinforced by our faith. Let's get one more. Jeremiah 51, verse 19. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 19. A portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. Say what? Man and woman. With thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. So we read in Ezekiel chapter 9. Slay utterly old and young, both men and women, and children all the prophets teach and preach the same thing same doctrine so the tabernacle of david or the men of the lord of the house of david are going to be raised up as mighty men walking weapons of war as in the days of old the bible says remember the days of old so through this word things are coming back to our remembrance through this word. Jeremiah 51, verse 22. With thee also will I break in pieces men and women, and with thee I will break in pieces old and young, and with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces 
with thee, the shepherd, and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. So through the men of the Lord and through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the men of the Lord are going to be raised up as in the days of old and are going to be the battle axe or the right arm of judgment through Yahweh Shai in my shiach, a righteous judgment through the right arm, the right hand of Yahweh Shai in my shiach. He is the right arm of the Most High Yahweh and the men of the Lord, Tabernacle of David are his battle acts. We coming, we coming, we coming. There's a reason that they told the apostles not to teach in the name. Why? Because there's power in the name. <clears throat> Let's find that. Let's go to Acts 5 and 27. Acts 5 and 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So there's power in the name. Let's read it again. Acts 5, verse 28. Acts 5 and 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So this gospel is going out through all the earth, and Jerusalem is the elect that are receiving this word. Now it's raining. Got to shut it down. It's raining. Got to shut it down. I like to keep my phone and iPad. It's raining. So this the Bible says that this gospel shall be preached in all the world and the end shall come. I got to shut it down. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh. All praises to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives, freedom to do so. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. We got next, Lord willing. Kwam Yashirala and Abad Babao. Tabernacle of David has been raised up. Shalom, Barakadam.